Wonderment. What does it mean to know Jesus as the Good Shepherd when the only places you've encountered sheep are at the petting zoos? How can I understand the promise of a land overflowing with honey when we buy ours in a bear-shaped bottle? Is it possible to grasp the urgency of Jesus' invitation to abide in the vine when we shop for grapes at a local grocery store? Join Pastor Chuck on a four-week spiritual adventure taken from Margaret Feinberg's book, Scouting the Divine, that moves from reading the Bible to entering stories that can be touched, tasted, heard, seen, smelled, and savored, and in the process, discover for yourself the beauty and wonder of Scripture all over again. Rock Church, welcome to part three in our Wonderment series. This series was inspired by Margaret Feinberg's book, Scouting the Divine, My Search for God in Wine, Wool, Wheat, and Wild Honey. Well, today we're gonna find God in wheat. There are so many metaphors in scripture that directly relate to harvesting and planting. In fact, there are around 100 scriptures that reference harvesting and reaping. There are about three dozen scriptures that relate to plowing. There are 300 references to fields, such as the field that I'm standing in right now, this high grass, um, getting eaten by bugs and praying that there are um, no snakes in here. We're on location in Hannah City, Illinois, at the Dusek Farm. I like to call this place Camp Dusek. We're gonna ride a tractor. Let's go. All right, I want to share a parable that Jesus told. It's the parable of the farmer scattering seed. It might be a portion of scripture that you're familiar with. It says this in verse 3 of Matthew chapter 13. Jesus told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, it says they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So Jesus says, if you have ears, make sure you listen, all right? Pay attention to this. And if you have hearing aids like myself, make sure you have batteries and you turn them up, all right? Now Jesus goes on to explain this parable. If you scroll down to verse 18, he says, now listen to the explanation of the parable about this farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. John 10.10 10 says the thief, the enemy, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so many times the gospel can be preached from a sermon, it can be preached by someone's life, and those that are hearing it don't respond because the enemy snatches that seed away. You see, the gospel is the good news of Jesus, that he's the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. We know that Jesus came from heaven to earth to die on the cross, to shed his blood so we could repent of our sins and have those sins wiped out. And when that happens, that restores our relationship with the Creator. That's the good news, that's the gospel. You confess Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and then you are saved. So many people never get saved because that message that I just shared is stolen immediately. Now Jesus goes on to say in verse 20, the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Now as a pastor, I've seen this happen so many times. Somebody will come to the church for the first time, the band's rocking, the atmosphere's electric, 
they just love it. The coffee's good. Everything's perfect. The message is delivered in a way that they can understand. They hear the gospel. They're given an opportunity to respond, and they do. They repent of sins. They confess Jesus to be their Lord. They surrender their life to God. They go out the door, and then we never see them again because there wasn't roots. That seed has to go deep within us. We need to feed ourselves the Word. We need to grow. We need to be discipled because there are problems, there's trials, there are pressures that surround us. And if we don't have root, we're not going to last. Jesus goes on to say, the seed that fell among the thorns. This represents those who hear God's Word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth so no fruits produced. Boy, I've seen this happen a lot. Even in my own life where stuff will try to get in there and, and knock me off the path, try to choke out that word. That's what the enemy loves to do, put people and stuff and things, wealth, anything that's attractive to our flesh, because our flesh is weak. He'll put anything in our path to try to get us to take a little detour. And we don't want to do that. Let's keep following Jesus. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's let, again, the Word of God take root deep within us. That way, we're not going to go this way or this way. Let's focus on Jesus. Then Jesus says in verse 23, The seed that fell on the good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's Word, and they produce a harvest of 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much has been planted. This is the kind of soil we want. We're in a garden that's been freshly tilled, and man, we want the Word to be like that. We want it to take root deep within our hearts so we can produce a crop, so we can be the church He's called us to be, so we can do what Jesus has called us to do. Get out of here, you gold darn preacher! I gotta get the crops in! I don't need to hear a message today! <laughs> 